Okay guys, in this video, we're moving on to the second part of the ADAS model. What we're going to do is to combine the ISLM and the ADAS to see the overall dynamics of the ADAS model. So a simple rule of thumb is that the ADAS equilibrium is going to follow the ISLM equilibrium. So just let me graphically show you what I mean. So if an equilibrium in the ISLM model is going to create an equilibrium output of Y0, what happens is that the equilibrium output in the ADAS model is also going to be Y0. So that is what I mean by the ADAS equilibrium is going to follow the ISLM equilibrium. So when we draw our AD curve and our AS curve, what happens is that the equilibrium is going to be over here, okay, at point A, where the output is Y0 and the price level is P0. So just let me zoom in so that you can see this better. So if the initial equilibrium is that simple, are the dynamics that simple? Well, let's take a look at an expansionary fiscal policy where the government spending increases and the IS curve is going to shift to the right. As such, so we have a new IS curve of IS1, G1, T0. So after the crowding out effect, we are at point B in the ISLM um, equilibrium and the output should be Y1. So by right, the AD curve is supposed to shift to the right as well, giving me a new equilibrium at point B. So you see, the ADS equilibrium is still following the ISM equilibrium. But here's the thing, the price level has just increased, which means that the real money supply is going to fall, leading the LM curve to shift up. So there are going to be some implications in this. The LM curve is going to shift up to reflect the new price level, which gives us an equilibrium in the ISLM model of point C. And now the output level falls to Y2. So does it mean that the AD curve is going to shift to the left again? So we have a new AD curve of 82, which is still the same level of government spending. But wait, the price level is now going to fall again from P1 to P2. So this means that the real money supply is going to increase, right? So the LM curve is going to shift down. Shifting down the LM curve is going to cause your output to increase, and your AD curve is going to shift to the right again, and then your price level is going to increase again, which is going to change the real money supply again, and then you need to change the LM curve again, and then you need to change the AD curve again, which then changes the output level again, and you're confused. But there's no need to worry because Quickonomics believes in making things simple for you to understand. So when we look at the dynamics of the ADES model, there are certain pointers that you should take note of. Firstly, you should know that your LM curve is really, really annoying. And it's really annoying because you have got the price level that's affecting the LM curve. And when the price level keeps changing, your LM curve keeps changing. So you have to really be careful of the LM curve. Now, the second thing you're going to take note of is you should establish your ISLM equilibrium before establishing the ADS equilibrium in the short run. The reason behind this is to avoid the really annoying LM curve. So with these two points in mind, here are five simple steps when you're talking about the dynamics of the ISLM model and the ADS model. So I'm going to break it down into the short run and the long run. So let's look at the short run. The first step will be to, of course, apply whatever economic disturbance that you experience. The second step will be to shift the LM curve to cater for the change in price. Okay, so these two things are going to be happening simultaneously. I'll show you what that means later. Now the third step, which is the last step of the short run, is of course to shift your AD curve according to your ISLM equilibrium. Now for the long run, the fourth step will be to shift your SAS curve, and this is going to result in a change in price, right? And that brings me to the last step, which is to shift the LM curve so that you cater for this change in price, which changes the real money supply in the economy. So these are the five simple steps that you have to use when you talk about the dynamics of the ISLM ADS model. I would suggest that you pause the video right now and copy down these five steps on a piece of paper before we move on to the graphical explanations. Okay, so very quickly, let us establish our initial equilibrium and look at what happens when we have a case of an expansionary fiscal policy. Let's make a very simple assumption that the government is going to increase its spending. So this is going to cause the IS curve to shift right. Knowing this, the AD curve is also going to shift right because of an increase in output, causing the price level to increase, the real money supply to fall, therefore, concurrently, your LM curve is going to shift up as well to reflect the new price level of P1. So here's your new IS curve with the new government spending, and here is your new LM curve for the new price level. Thanks for watching a sample of the Quickonomics online learning experience. 
We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs. Simple to understand and captivating so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials and exam solutions in the form of videos which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.